Welcome to the Silver Log Weekend video. I'll try to get out another one if I can. This one will be in regards to the inflation adjusted price for silver as well as the gold to silver ratio. And I think it's good to point out that this is that of approximate data. This is within yearly or excuse me, monthly averages. And uh, I don't know what numbers to use. I could use the CPI, but it's like a CP lie. And uh, I don't like to lie. And I would say flat out that these numbers are definitely incorrect. But how close do they happen to be? Is it something between shadow stats and CPI numbers for what the true inflation levels are? After all, a lot of the numbers they report do not make sense. But now let's move on to what the charts happen to be showing in within here. When you look at this with two moving averages, it was clear the market was in a downtrend in, until this last decade when it managed to get above this line and make new highs not seen in quite some time back to this level of support. This is really as textbook as it gets as far as charts are concerned within the patterns. Because when you manage to get above this significant level, you come back to support, break away. If it continues to go textbook, it could very easily come back to support. Now what we'll do is we'll put this in a candle format. Take a look at this chart on an eight month level. Each one of these candles representing that of eight months. And when I look at this particular chart, we see, hey, wait a second here. It's up towards that uh, Fibonacci line. Doesn't it uh, have to find resistance here? And it can. It sometimes cannot. But yeah, oftentimes you do. And we, when we do have any retracements, where will I be looking for the market to go down towards? In here. As far as where I think we would move to the upside if we move higher, then why not this Fibonacci line in here? Now, the levels are continuously changing because as new inflation levels come into play, these levels will move higher. For example, if there happens to be triple the inflation from this point to whatever the next point happens to be, then this high will be moved from 483 to about 1500 or 1400 and change because the money keeps on getting inflated. When this high occurred back in 1980 and it was $50, it was $50 inflation adjusted because they were playing that time frame live. It's the reason why silver and gold work out so well is because there is a massive amount of inflation in the world that we see today and it seems as if it is that as the only safe currencies available during these economic times. It's been money for quite some time right now and we see in this uh, look this type of chart in here that goes back to the 1300s it's been for the most part beaten down pretty bad and you might state, well, there's no le legitimacy towards this. And I, I can tend to agree with you. I've seen this 650-year chart on the Internet, and that's exactly and only what this is being based from within the current information we got, the approximation of what shadow stats says inflation is at. And that's all I can go from here. But what's interesting within this most recent time frame and all we need to know, or all I care about back here, is that it was a lot higher, it moved lower, it tried to get back, didn't do it, and it's trying to get above this declining moving average. Once again, I put this into candlestick format, and uh, this is uh, what we're coming up with. We we're down below this 18 decade or 180 year moving average. Now, if you're trading this chart, uh, you should only be trading for the next tick or two because most people only live a few ticks in total with each one lasting 10 years. But if you're looking at this chart and 
you think of shorter term time frames like the one minute chart for example and you see a move like this happen then what would this tell you you go from this level have a big move to the upside then you have a fast move lower and it's back up in towards this level in here it tells you something's going on for me it tells me one of two things either one this thing is really ready to explode because we have the original explosion in here after making new lows it's very easily could be ready for that new leg higher but the same point it could mean we're at that area where we find resistance we have this high we have this high we have this low we have this low and we're ready for another leg lower and make new all-time lows inflation adjusted and does it make sense that it does that makes these new lows you could say well it's possible the reason why I like playing the silver chart or gold chart or anything like that is because I feel as if I'm cheating because there's inflation on my side however when we're in the situation now the debt ceiling talks as they are people waking up to the currency what this tells me is I can now see the fundamental print for the technical view that I see here that view of going way up way down and showing an extreme amount of volatility it makes sense that th this thing is ready to go also or furthermore this first can or this current candle we are only a year and a half into the decade this is only 15 percent of what each candle is going through and this is already bigger than the previous decade pretty much bigger than this decade and only these two candles in here can really match size with this one towards here my overall perspective on things is that when you're holding silver then what you're trying to do is protect yourself from the currency collapse therefore if you get in at this at any time and the market just stays sideways then you've protected yourself if it goes higher then you've increased within your investment because you got more buying power than you had when you originally invested and if it goes lower you would lose out on buying power now we're going to switch this up to the gold to silver ratio and we're uh, going to start off within this five and a half day chart and why five and a half days it, it's a long story what i'm trying to do is get the best i can for the levels up in here and the bottom parts Therefore, what I have done is I've taken the SLV and the GLD for this example. And then I take the readings for what the market was in the morning at 9 o'clock or 9.30. And at the afternoon around, I think, lunchtime, 12 o'clock, and then again at 4 o'clock. So I get three ticks per day. And I do five and a half. So one day I will do it Monday morning. We'll close the day. Then next week it would be Monday afternoon. The next week was Tuesday morning. It's a long story why it took five and a half. It really doesn't matter as long as you get the position of the movements. The 18 moving average or any of the ones that you use are going to work within sync because the time frame really shouldn't matter for the most part. It's good to be aware of what you're trading within for volatility reasons and such. But as far as the chart reading is concerned, all this, these numbers are here are complete nonsense as are these numbers here. And what we see within the price action is that it's finding a lot of resistance here within this Fibonacci line at a ratio of 42.7 to 1. It's been there for well, quite some time. It got up to this level and then it found support here at the uh, 18 period average of closes. And it came back and forth many times up here, back again, up. And well, this situation in here, it never found support at the uh, 18 average of closes. And for the first time, it has now went back below that line. And this is a major, major, major level that we will be seeing on multiple time frames. A breakdown here 
could be quite dangerous because when we see the movements within here, if it doesn't hold, we have this failed possible move in here, thus a test back at this 31 level I have on here 3140, although I think it's a little bit lower when you use the uh, COMEX prices. I'll get into that on the next chart. And that would be the support level. We also got this band at 3253. If it does manage to break towards the upside, the Fibonacci rule pretty much is you come to a Fibonacci line, you break above it, you're expecting to go to this level here. That level is 5156. But it has to find a way to get above that level first. Now let's take a look at this at a more longer term time frame. We have the quarterly chart on here, and I'm not going to put this one up for too long because I'm going to be moving this to the yearly chart. But what uh, is important to know is it was showing a lot of indecision within this average. Every time it went above or below it line, that line, it wasn't able to hold. An example of this is when you get above a line or below it. Will it able to find the support or resistance to make the new play? And here it gets above it, it needs to find the support. Here it doesn't. Here it goes below it, it needs to find resistance. And here it doesn't. Here it gets above it, it needs to find support. And here, well, it found support but didn't go higher. So it stabilized there more than anything, and that was it. And now it's went lower. So now let's see what happens when it comes back to this level. And if it finds resistance, that's not the only way it can collapse in on itself. It can do it without even a test. But that hasn't happened as of yet. So I'd be looking for this as a possible area for resistance. It is a declining number right now that's at 5182. And after each quarter goes by, that level will keep on getting lower. Now let's switch this to the yearly term time frame. And currently within this chart, we see that it's at levels not seen since going back to the early part of the 1980s. Ever since, it has uh, cut through this low. Now, these levels are accurate. And I say accurate as in since 1968 or this, this one in here, I think. Every level, whether it's here, here or the top of the bottom parts are accurate. It may have went lower than here, and it may have went higher than here. This is daily levels that I've went through from 1968, the highest and lowest ones for each year. Therefore, there's been a lot of intraday wild moves, like this little move in here. And when we look at strict major levels that are very important and the line that's drawn in right now this Fibonacci mark at about 47 that's a pretty massive level because it was a level that was support once in the late 90s support again down below here that's not the case anymore what's happening now is that the market has went below this level. Now finding resistance down below here means that we're pretty much going down here to 29.74, but we already have, it says 31.4. So we've already been there. If we break below, the big level I was looking at before was 24. And I wanna take a look at this on a line chart going back to 68. There's no dates on this screen, but this was 1980, and the high is in here. I got the data. It's sometime in the early 1990s. But if we take a line and draw where the significant period happens to be, be somewhere in here. This would be that big line that's of major importance. Because that resistance level was found a way to stabilize within it here. It didn't collapse at this point, thus it managed to get above it, come back, find support at this level, find support again, find support again, and now it has just found resistance and it's working towards the downside. 
Therefore, when I'm looking at this chart, my myself, I'm at the point where I do see how this thing wants to roll over. We're finding resistance, moving lower. That's an and that's a signal I press or a, a pattern formation that I like to say. Yes, this thing is uh, breaking down for a lot of times if I'm making any type of wagers I'm not the biggest a fan of the what's the best way of putting it the traditional stop loss so as it was broken here a lot of people are like oh man I gotta get stop I gotta stop down below there you know what no although I probably would have got it at the exact same time because the markets keep going lower and lower, I'll, I'll rather wait to, for the first significant correction, and that's happened. Because when the market came down to this point in the uh, time frame of the end of April, it's then since moved up to this 40 level. So it's had that correction from that bottom. And therefore, it's now at the situation where it could very easily keep going lower. So if people were, people were asking me before, Oh, should I be selling my gold for silver down below here? And I couldn't do it. I simply wouldn't be able to do it because I don't like selling anything after it's already fell off a cliff like that. I'd at least wait for that cliff to have some sort of dead cat bounce. And that has now been the case. Now, I said this in another video that 24 was a significant level. Let me just draw a line and see why. It's... There's really not too much towards this level. It is this significant Fibonacci mark in here. Well, not Fibonacci, although it probably is. But it's the previous resistance here, a little bit of resistance. However, for the most part, breaking below, let's find a good line in here, really. Breaking below 30 brings us to uncharted territories back to normality. Because normality, or the normal, has it at a 16 to 1 ratio. It has been pretty low before. We can see within this that it's been cut down to as low as uh, about 14 to 1. Okay, thank you for watching the first part of this weekend's video there will be more throughout the weekend if nothing comes up sunday i and there should be i'll uh, try to get uh, the next section out on monday and tuesday thank you and have yourself a magnificent weekend bye bye